Showcasing local talent, professionals, and everyday people making Salt Lake City what it is today. It's time for another episode of the I Am Salt Lake podcast. Hey, before we get going with this episode, we want to uh, remind you that City Weekly's Best of Utah voting is going on right now through September 3rd. They have a Best Local Podcast category this year, and I know we could use your help. So head on over to IamSaltLake.com slash Best of Utah 2018 for more information and cast your votes on things in businesses in Utah that you believe are the best. And many thanks to those of you that have already voted for us. And with that being said, let's welcome everybody out today to episode 344 of I Am Salt Lake Podcast. My name's Chris. And my name's Chrissy. Hey, today we're recording at Mountain West Hard Cider. They're located at 425 North, 400 West. Make sure to stop on by and grab yourself a hard cider on your way home from work. I can't wait to come here and try all the different flavors. But if this is your first time listening to us, and you probably might be wondering what we're here for... Well, we're a podcast to showcase awesome people in Salt Lake City. We get to talk to musicians, artists, business owners, restaurant owners, really anyone that might have a cool story. Like today on the podcast, we get to sit down with local ghost hunter, Jennifer Jones. Jennifer and I have actually been Twitter friends for a while, so it was great to bring her on the podcast, have her share her story. We got to talk about haunted locations here in Utah, tips if you're interested in starting ghost hunting, and about a book that she wrote about all the uh, haunted uh, deals up in Ogden, Brigham City, and Logan. And we got to talk about a lot more. We're going to be playing that conversation here in just a couple of minutes. But before we jump into that interview, let's give some quick love to our sponsors for this episode. Five Wives Vodka and Blip Billboards. We're going to be telling you more about them later on the podcast. Hey guys, it's farmer's market season, and for those of you that have been listening to the podcast for a while, or if you've just listened to a few episodes, you know I love it. It is my favorite time of the year here in Salt Lake City. The best part about the downtown farmer's market, it is going until October 20th, every Saturday, right in historic Pioneer Park, from 8 a.m. to 2 p.m., right between 300 South 400 South, you're going to want to check this out. I mean, this is, it's fun for the whole family. I mean, there's food, food trucks, produce. I mean, there's local vendors that are selling everything from clothing to bars of soap. I mean, you got to go check this place out. And if you have any questions, I know like we have a a Facebook group uh, where one of our listeners was like, hey, what do you guys recommend? Shoot us an email. We'd love to uh, tell you about some of our recommendations at the downtown farmer's market. But make sure to go check it out every Saturday from 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. All right, let's get into that conversation with Jennifer Jones when she sat down with us and shared her story. Enjoy. This has been a fun question, Jennifer, to uh, start the podcast out with. What did your childhood smell like? Oh, my gosh. It smelled like the outdoor, the outdoors, desert, dirt. Did you grow up here in Utah? No, I grew up in Phoenix. Phoenix, Arizona. I don't know if we've ever had anybody on the podcast from Phoenix, Arizona. I don't know if we have. And we I, have now. I apologize if if uh, if <laughs> there's somebody. So what brought you to Utah then? Uh, my ex-husband got stationed at Hill. Hill Air Force Base. And that's, for people listening, that's up near Ogden, I guess. Yep. Uh, I've actually never been visited Hill Air Force Base. What's the one in Bluffdale? I thought that was Hill. No, there, that's nope. a prison. That's oh. the, that's the that's oh the sorry prison. my bad thought, all right so, never mind i don't so you, do that stuff you, you just stayed around in utah and uh you made it home i want to let's jump right into ghosts and paranormal what or who got you interested in that whole thing ghost paranormal weirdness in general yeah weirdness in general i mean because it's Creepy definitely things. not a normal thing for people It's so normal. Well, for you, this is when I, so (laughs) when I told Chrissy, I was bringing you on, she was excited. Oh, I'm so excited. This this is I'm like, I could talk about this all day. (laughs) I'm very excited. I had a a strange experience as a kid. um, And it just happened to coincide with like Ghostbusters coming out. And, and then it was like, from that point, I was just hooked. And so, I mean, I was like eight, I guess, seven or eight. Did you start chasing them back then? No, I just like would read everything I could get my hands on, spooky stories, ghosts, you know, anything like 
horror or like spooky. goosebumps. Yeah. Oh yeah. So, but I was so I'm older happened? than that. <laughs> so what happened? I mean, so you said something happened. It's not even that like spooky, but um, we lived in a normal house and we um, it's like everything in Phoenix is like a ranch style house, you know. And so there's usually like a long hallway with bedrooms on at the end. And we had been eating and we used to eat in the living room on TV trays. So I was taking my TV tray from the living room to the kitchen and to pa- to get to the kitchen. I had to pass the hallway. And as I walked by, I saw like a little shadow thing run from one bedroom into what was my parents' bedroom and it freaked me out and I was talking to my mom about it and she just poo-pooed the whole thing like oh it's nothing you just imagined it and then uh, the next day or so I overheard her talking with a friend on the phone and she was saying how you know I had seen something weird and that I didn't know that the previous owners had a child that had died in the house no kidding so you said Ghostbusters came out. No, or it was like a Ghostbuster experience. I no, think. like Ghostbusters right around that time when when I had that experience, Ghostbusters had come out. Like the, and, oh, the movie. So like the movie. The movie. Oh, I was thinking actual <laughs> Ghostbuster oh people my gosh, that would came so to your house. Cool. And I was like, get out of call? town. Like, is there really such a, a service out there? I mean, maybe <laughs> there, there wasn't be. maybe there you wasn't Phoenix. I don't I don't know. Hey, you uh, never know. I've never But been so Phoenix. so that experience just kinda of opened it up for more and more things that you kind of were like, wait a minute, maybe there's ghosts and and spirits out there. Yeah, I just you know, I really liked I liked hearing people's stories about things that they felt they couldn't explain that they had experienced or seen or heard of or whatever and it's, honestly, from that point, it was just like, I'm not obsessed, but I, if a new book came out about ghosts or whatever, I, I'm sure I owned it. So did you have, has anyone ever called you to help them if they thought something was off in their house? Yeah, I actually, for a few years, I ran, um, one of the busiest teams in Utah. Um, I was the director of the paranormal investigations team of Utah. And so we would get calls all the time and we'd go to people's houses and, you know, have to tell them, like, I'm really sorry. There's nothing weird here. It's just your refrigerator's making noises or whatever, you know. Have you did you ever find anything, though, that like you were like, you need to get out of this house and never come back? Nothing that drastic. But there was a house in West Valley that the lady had called us and she had just crazy stories of things that had happened to her and. What we would do is we would just go and set up our equipment and then just kind of like hang out yeah, and see what would happen. And um, she had wood floors and we were all downstairs. There was no one upstairs and it sounded like someone picked up a box full of like books or something really heavy and just dropped it. So we all ran upstairs to see what had fallen and there was nothing out of place oh, or I'd be out. I'm like, I'm, I'm out. <laughs> she, she had actually called the police once because she saw a man in her basement and she was home alone and it freaked her out so bad. And the police came and acted like she was crazy because it was winter time. And when they got to the house, they kind of looked around and when they finally knocked on her door, they're like, there's no footsteps in the snow anywhere. <laughs> oh my God. So you said equipment. I mean, do you take equipment? Do you have like, like what kind of equipment is it that you take? Um, back then I had everything like video well, cameras. I was going to say, what is everything? I, yeah. <laughs> video cameras, like ghost boxes, EMF detectors, ghost box. Oh my gosh. I can't even think of all this. We had like just a ton of voice recorders. Um, now when Matt and I go out and do things, we, were like really simple. So we take a voice recorder Mm -hmm. and I don't even like, I had a fancy camera that I'd take all the pictures with. I just use my iPhone now because it all just works the same. Technology is just advanced so Mm -hmm. much that you just need your phone. Like you can record everything with your phone, take pictures with your phone. You're good. So what did you start first? A blog or there's a book you wrote, you wrote that I want to get into. What, what came first or why did you decide to, well, maybe I'll actually turn this into something, right? What, what got you into that like or inspired you to do that? Um, actually, it happened because when I moved to Utah, I didn't, I didn't know anybody here. Um, I was a stay-at-home mom. I had two little kids. And I wanted to start going out and like investigating haunted places. And none of the local teams would take me. Like, they, oh, no. <laughs> they all Sorry, turned me we're, down. We're not, we're not bringing you. Right. So <laughs> Did they want like experienced people. They, I think so. And they were huh. just like, we're full. We, we don't need people. And, <laughs> and so I was like, okay, well, I'll just start my own team then. And, and I put an ad in the paper. And um, what did the ad say? That I was starting a ghost team. And if people wanted to like join up, meet at the library at this 
time. And Did anybody actually reach out to you? Oh, yeah. Really? Oh, man, I'd be so all over that. Did you have experience or did you know what to do at that point? Or were you just like, let's try? Let's she, yeah, just, no. she just wanted to make friends. I, that's <laughs> just, a great way to make friends, I creepy especially friends. friends in the other dimension. Yeah. <laughs> it's fantastic. No, I didn't know. Like, I didn't know anything other than just from, you know, all the books that I had read and things like that. I think I had been on um, like one ghost investigation in Tombstone, Arizona, right before we had moved up here. And it was like, you know, you paid to go. So it wasn't like a real investigation, but it it got me interested more in it. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, so I did the team thing for like six, seven years. And then I just got super burned out and bummed out on all the people. And I was like, this is too much. And so I gave it up. And and then I realized that I missed it, but I didn't want to go back to that. So I started the Dead History and just started the blog and have been doing that ever since. Which is at deadhistory.com, right? Yes. For people listening. Um, it's the dead history. Or the dead history. Thank yes. you, Chrissy. No problem. And, I've just been on it all day. We'll so. mention all this, of course, at the end, but might as well mention it now. Head on. It's a great website, by the way. Thank you. Tons of cool things on there, as well as a book that you wrote that's titled Ghosts of Ogden, Brigham City, and Logan. How long ago did, did that book come out? That came out um, October of 2017. And the book's just kind of about well, you you tell the listeners what it what they can find in the book. Um, it just basically covers all of the more well known haunted places from like the Ogden area north. It has some urban legends in there too. So it's like if you know people want to find out about the more popular or common haunting haunted places, hauntings, urban legends, then that book covers all of them. And when did you say it came out? Just October of twenty seventeen. So so pretty recent. Pretty recent. Pretty yeah. recent. Yeah. One thing that I like to do differently from other um, people that are into like the paranormal is I like to tell what the the rumor, the legend is. And then I like to dig into the actual verifiable history and see how much of the two meet up or if it's just like all story. Yeah, because so. I did notice that I was reading your piece on the Utah, no, Utah, Ogden County Exchange. What is it? Ogden Exchange Building. So that like that one was fascinating because you had a link on your site to the EVP recording that some some ghost hunters took there. Right. And then I went and listened to the Coast to Coast. Well, Coast to Coast is an AM radio show yeah, yeah. That, that does paranormal stuff. And I listened to that over and over and it's over. It's freaky. It is the most intense EVP I've ever heard. Can you like, podcast Coast to Coast? Can can you podcast it? Yeah, like is it pod like can you, know you download what? it in I don't iTunes know. or I should I should find out because it's a it's a good show. Yeah. I've tried to listen to EVPs before a lot and I've never heard one this intense. And so I was just like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, there has, to... but then you couldn't find anything that actually lined up with the story. So I'll explain to Chris and for people who don't have time to look it up, the the EVP recording, you can hear a child saying, help me, can't breathe. And then you hear kind of a low pitch voice saying murder. Yeah. It's and like then you hear water drowning. splashing like he's drowning the kid. It's horrifying. So, okay, here's a question. I had it for a little bit later on, but what do you tell people uh, that don't believe in ghosts or spirits? Like me personally, I'm going to be honest, I don't believe in ghosts or spirits. You know, it's a personal thing. Sure. I don't tell people. I mean, I've had people come up to me that just, you know, have crazy, crazy stories and that's what they believe. If that's what they want to believe, they're not going to listen to me to sure. change their mind or anything like that. So I kind of just, you're either into it or you're not. I wish I was. I really genuinely um, do because it seems like so much fun. It, You know, actually, like most of the time it's really boring. But when you get a good EVP, then it's like super exciting. And Matt can attest to some things that we've done where he had never, you know, been on a investigation or been out looking for ghosts and we caught just crazy stuff. And he's like, what? Tell us what, 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 what was it? What's the scare? I mean, I want to tell <laughs> have you, us have you released scary. anything like that on your site? When, have, if you've ever captured anything, have you put it up for people? I have a couple on there. I'm trying to think offhand, which ones I put up there. It's been a while. I have some from the Ben Lomond hotel or the Bigelow hotel that I need to put up there. Oh, but yeah, I just I haven't about that yet. Too. That's, um, but this one, site. Actually, I haven't put up because the um, I don't want to totally give away what oh, it fine. is, but yeah. it's a museum in Utah. And uh, we were asked to go out there and just check it out. And we kind of um, went out there expecting nothing because it didn't have a history of anything tragic or weird or anything. 
And um, not only did we just get some crazy EVPs, but we got whatever it was to say its name, which matched up with the name of the person who was instrumental in getting the location turned into a museum. So that was kind of They just wanted to stick around and see it get finished. Mm Mm-hmm. Wow. So are you actually going to release that for people to be able to to see or listen to? I don't know. The problem, I guess, was that this man who died in the 60s still has family in the area. And so the guy in charge of the museum was kind of like, he didn't want to upset his family. Or, hmm. So, yeah, I can understand that. It's, it's sometimes it you got to like, oh, totally. <laughs> you got to walk oh, a fine line sometimes. Yeah, you know? there's, there, there is that whole thing because the people who are on the other side obviously have family still living mm-hmm. in you. That, that, that is a weird balance. Like, is it your story to tell or, right. or not? Honestly, like, that's one of the reasons, especially with Urban Legends, that I really like doing this because I feel bad for these people that, you know, died normal deaths or, or horrific deaths and deaths in some cases. And then, you know, they have this legend that's following them for like a hundred years or more. And it like takes over when in reality, like they were an actual person that, you know, had a family and a life. And so I like to tell about the person themselves and not like feed into the legend that's grown up around them over time. So you're more about bringing reality to the, the paranormal. Kind yeah. of kind of showing people that it's like, you know, it's based on reality and see and maybe I, see, I could get behind that, you know what I mean? Like it's not a I guess I associate spirits and ghosts too much with religion. And mm. so I have to detach myself from that part of that aspect and yeah, be like, Okay, you know, it, it's okay to just just uh, be into ghosts and spirits. Oh, <laughs> well, see, and I don't I don't associate it with religion at all, which I I should because they say, Oh, get a priest and yeah. you know bless the house or whatever but <laughs> the exorcist <laughs> get some sage i could go with sage so That's- okay so we talked about this book in ogden in brigham city logan that you wrote salt lake city when's this book i mean we got listeners are are emailing in as we record this wanting to know where your book is <laughs> for salt lake because there isn't a book for salt lake city ghosts yet is there so i want to write another book i definitely want to do it about salt lake Um, the issue that I've kind of been dragging my feet one, because I work full time and it's a lot of work. Like it's so much work. And the other thing is the publishing company that published my first book I've heard, um, is going to be publishing a book about ghosts in Salt Lake sometime this year. No kidding. Oh, no way. Not from you though. No, not from me. Do you know who, or we we don't want to talk about that? No, I I don't know. I've heard it from a local book owner. Um, so I tend to, to believe it, but I don't know details. The other thing is I'm under contract with them until October of 2019. Oh, so you can't, you can't even go self publish. Really? I could if they like I could propose something and if they turned it down, then I could. OK. Um, but honestly, like it would probably take me that long to write the book anyway. So that's yeah. where I'm at right now is I'm kind of I'm starting to work on it. And then once I'm free of the contract, I'll just self. What, ha- what what happens if you were to go publish it yourself and you're under contract where they could sue you? I yeah. guess. Oh, oh yeah, man. totally. Take all your monies. In the meantime, though, could listeners, if they have any creepy ghost stories, reach out to you, I guess? Yeah, and, totally. And tell you about some cool... I mean, or do you have enough content already? You're just waiting to put it together? I always enjoy hearing sure. about places that I might not be aware of or places that I've heard of before in people's experiences, so they can totally reach out to me. Do you feel like uh, Do you feel like you know most of the stories in the area, or is there always a new one popping up? You don't hear about new stuff... As much? As much, um, and I think I'm fairly familiar with most of the ones, at least in Salt Lake. But when it gets to like outside of Salt Lake, you know, I'm sure there's some that I haven't heard of. What creates like a legitimate story? I mean, because Chrissy and I, like we could make up a story like, oh, my gosh, you know, the Mountain West hard cider building that we're in right now is scary or spooky. There's or, a ghost or, recording a ghost. with us right now. <laughs> right. Does that, I mean, is that all it takes to create like a scary story or, or if, well, I don't we know. Got Does it. that yeah. make sense? Yeah. But it seems like in my opinion, and I don't know, but the stuff I like to listen to, you need a real occurrence, right? Where, like you said, you saw the, the, um, shadow child. I running saw from that one room chair out of the corner of my eye move. <laughs> oh, you're full of it. We know what's real. <laughs> um, what I look for is like firsthand accounts, things that, mm-hmm. you know, people have seen or experienced. And then I like, I think I've written a couple without some decent, like juicy history, but I really like the historical aspect of the places too. 
And so, I mean, it's pretty morbid, but you know, like if there Mm -hmm. were murders there or tragic events where a lot of people died, things of that nature, then that's kind of what I look for to put the story together. Right. Like there has to be some, some reason there would be a haunting. Right. Yeah. We need to actually take a break here really fast, play a message from our sponsors. But then when we get right, when we get back, we're going to obviously chat with Jennifer some more about uh, some of these ghost hauntings here in Utah. So hang tight. We'll be right back. All right, guys, I know each and every one of you, you've seen the big digital billboards when you're driving up and down I-15. You've looked up at them. Have you ever thought, how can I get my business up on these billboards? This is a great way to get your business in front of more people. I am Salt Lake. We're actually in the middle of a blip billboards billboard campaign. We've had some awesome success. We've gotten the podcast exposed to more people And we're going to tell you a little bit about how you can get your business up on these uh, digital billboards, because rather than the typical month-long contract that can cost you thousands of dollars and only have your billboard up in one location, Blip sells per flip, aka a blip, on digital billboards. A blip is anywhere between 7.5 and 10 seconds, depending on the billboard, and one of these blips can go for as little as one penny. You can be specific on which board you want to advertise on here locally in Salt Lake City or even nationwide. And you can also pick the times that you want to advertise. And you only pay for the time that you want your message to be up. Why do you want your your business on a billboard? Let me tell you, you're going to gain awareness. You're going to get your brand name out there to as many people as you can. Billboards are an effective way in building your brand. Like I said, I am Salt Lake Podcast. We're in the middle of a digital billboard campaign. It has been phenomenal. Head on over to blipbillboards.com. This is where you can get more information. You can set up your billboard campaign. And while you're there, tell them thanks for sponsoring I am Salt Lake Podcast. All right, guys, this episode of the podcast is also sponsored by Five Wives Vodka. You know, when you're in Texas, go ahead, drink Tito's. But when you're here in Salt Lake City, you better be drinking Five Wives Vodka. So the next time you hit up the state liquor store, pick up a bottle of Five Wives Vodka for yourself, pick up a bottle for your wife or your girlfriend or maybe the buddy's barbecue. You'll be the hit of the party. You know, they actually have three different flavors. I didn't know about all three different flavors. I only knew about the original flavor at first, but Chrissy and I are going to tell you about all three different flavors. Like I said, they have the original. This is the original Five Wives Vodka. It's made from Utah Mountain Spring Water. It's 100% distilled corn spirit and gluten-free. The spring is hidden in beautiful Ogden Canyon. It's inaccessible by vehicle, so the water's actually hiked out five gallons at a time. Can I tell you kind of a secret? Sometimes I feel like I want to go into a wine mode where I want to be fancy and have wine in the evening, but I always regret it and I end up going back to Five Wives. It's so delicious. It's so good. And you and you feel great in the morning afterwards, too, which is incredible. But they also make a flavor called Sinful, which is a flavored vodka with a de- delicious cinnamon taste. Unlike other cinnamon products that leave a cinnamon candy taste in your mouth, Sinful is like a morning cinnamon roll with only 76 calories per ounce. They also have Five Wives Heavenly, which is a flavored vodka with a delicious vanilla taste. Heavenly's rich, buttery vanilla flavor. It comes through without coating your taste buds with sugar, and this is going to result in more vanilla and less calories. Make sure to visit their website, fivewivesvodka.com. This is where you can find out more information about them. You can get recipes, all that good stuff. And like I said, the next time you go to the state liquor store, pick up a bottle of Five Wives Vodka. And many thanks to Five Wives Vodka for sponsoring this episode of the podcast. When we went to break, uh, we were talking about a, an event you did in Wendover. Uh, it was like a tour, I guess, or tell a little bit about what it, what it was. Or uh, is it something you regularly do? Um, so it was the Wendover Air, Airfield Paranormal Experience. It was the first one ever. It was the first time that they have let paranormal people bring the public in to investigate the buildings. We're planning on it being an annual event, but we're still recovering from all the work that we did. It was just a couple weekends ago, so we haven't like ironed out the details. Basically, we were given full access to like six different buildings out there. And it's one of those places where I don't think a lot of people even realize there's an old World War II airbase. 
And not only is it just a World War II airbase, but it was home of the Enola Gay that dropped the atomic bomb. And so it was really historically important. And they can really use the funds to help restore the remaining buildings that are out there. Um, and it has a reputation of being haunted. And so it was really cool to be able to go in like the old hospital buildings and the barracks. And wow. The were bed. they just, were they trashed or are they still pretty good condition or what's the story with those? Um, it kind of depends. There's one building. Uh, well, there's a couple buildings that have been like fully restored. So they're totally fine, you know, with electricity and all that. And then um, the Enola Gay hangar has been restored and it's just, I mean, it's a ginormous building. Um, but the hospital buildings, for the most part, have not. And so those were like, those were my favorite because it's a hospital. And, you know, oh, those are always the creepiest wings. Yeah. By far. So, so. is this open all year round or it's just a certain time? Um, the Air Base Museum is open year round. Um, and then our event, if we do more, will be in October. Other paranormal people went out to this, right? Or was it, they just invited you out to it? Yeah, no. Um, a few years ago, at least one group was allowed in. Oh, okay. Um, and okay. that was pretty much it. Like they would not let other people in um, ever since then. That was years ago. So this is the first time that they've let like the public come. Uh, so. I gotcha. I got you. So are they going to open it up to you to, to be able to do future events and kind of make a, this a more regular thing? I right. believe so. Yeah, that right. was, that's the, what she's hoping. I guess. Yeah. yeah. This one really? that we just did was kind of like a pilot to see how it would go and if it was yeah. feasible. So yeah. probably won't do it in July again. Cause it's miserably hot. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. It's rough in July. Okay. I have a question. Have you ever heard of or been to the Skinwalker Ranch in oh northern gosh. Utah? I've okay. never even heard of this, what? Chrissy. I hadn't either, but then I listened and to Matt's a podcast, And Matt's over here just, just cringing. Is, it, is that a good cringe? Or, or? It's terrifying. Oh, there's... The stories are terrifying. It's supposedly the most, like the, the most peril... How do I say this? It has the most intense paranormal activity of anywhere in the U.S. Yeah, so... From what I've heard. Like, okay, I'll just off the bat, like if you're interested in hearing about the Skinwalker Ranch and the stories, there's a book called Hunt for the Skinwalker by George Knapp and you need to get it because Ooh. it's freaky. And I don't like ghosts don't scare me. Like, spooky stories don't scare me. Alien stuff. It freaks me out. And, and so, there's a lot of alien stuff. Up yeah, because yeah. it's not just like paranormal stuff. It's like alien and really weird stories. So I haven't been there. I've heard of it. I know, you know, the general area where it is. I've seen a lot of pictures. But where, where's it? Where's the general area? It's like out near Vernal. Okay. So not super close to Salt Lake then? Not super close. It's like up and to the right. What's, yeah. what's, the, main, at a map. what's the main gist of this place? And I well, mean, is there like a, like a basic So story? it's a ranch that a family bought at one point from, and while the, when they got there, there were like chains by the doors and locks on the inside and outside of the windows of the farmhouse. And there were like all these really weird things and they couldn't figure out why they were there. And then all these strange happenings started happening. They would see uh, lots of animals with red eyes and hear lots of creepy scratching noises. I don't yeah, know. And they'd then see there's like been some alien abductions. Yeah. Well, you know, there was like, the I, I believe there was cow mutilations. Oh yeah. Lots of cow mutilations. Wow. And they right. see like what they thought was like a, a wolf or a coyote and the guy shot it. And when he went to go find it, there was like nothing there, but a chunk of like rotting flesh. And the cows, the cow mutilations had like surgical, like their eyes were surgically removed and they were completely drained of blood. Yeah, it's free, it's, it's just freaky. like really extreme animal mutilation. So is this place open to the public? No. It, so um, word got out that it was like really well, yeah. haunted or, you know, <laughs> yeah. the creepy stuff was going on. And so um, this billionaire guy, I think his name's Bigelow, he bought it. And oh, he yes. took all these like scientists and stuff out there to Didn't see what they Didn't he try to set find. up like a government entity up there that they were trying to keep under wraps yeah like it's on lockdown people can't really get in there yeah there's the whole backstory he still owns it i believe i think so so it's supposed to be i mean from what i've heard and this is all hearsay that it's kind of like an area 51 Mm -hmm. so i i want to so it's probably all gated off it's probably probably yeah you can't get there but there's a book you were saying which i'll i'll look up that book and try to put a link for like amazon or something so people could check it out yeah it's been out for a long time but it's it's just freaky the stories like from the family that live there yeah and then they finally sold it to the guy and they're like we're out yeah. and one guy from the family stayed on as a ranch hand to help them manage cattle that they were using as lures for the paranormal activity like they kept cows and cattle on to like see what would happen to them just weird stuff 
So do you have like a dream location that you would like to visit that you haven't been to yet? Oh, yeah. my So my dream location is um, Alcatraz. Ooh, yeah. And it's is it like really hard to go? I, I, they it's do an tour- island, right? They do tours there, don't yeah. they? Yeah. Well, I've been there like okay. on the tour, but I want to stay like overnight where there's not, you know, a million people. Do you think they would and- let you? Probably not. Hey, what was the name if of that place lost, we went to in <laughs> Philly? Quotes. What was the name of the place? Oh, oh my Eastern gosh. State. Eastern State Penitentiary you, did, is fantastic. Have you been there? Yeah. That was creepy. Did you do the audio tour with Steve Buscemi? Yes. Oh, that was man. the best part of it the was tour. So <laughs> like, I've never I even didn't heard of it. Leave. And, and we're, we had a day to kill. And Chrissy's like, well, we're, our Airbnb was like four blocks away from yeah. that place. I was like, we're walking. We are walking in the rain to this place <laughs> because I have to see it. And it was so worth it. No, it's great. We the got to go. Wing yeah, was creepy. That was my favorite part. We happened to walk over right as they were like taking people in. So. Oh man, and the the I want to say it's wing number twelve. It's closed off for like the entire year except for October, and they use that wing to do a haunted house. And it's supposed to be the most haunted wing of the whole place, like genuinely haunted. So I would like to go back. Do you visit haunted houses like during Halloween time? I have. Do you think they're stupid? No, like I love all <laughs> this of is that. Dumb. I love all that kind of thing, like horror movies, cheesy horror movies, like Halloween's my favorite um, holiday. I just, you know, is, I don't discriminate against you're not against the one getting murdered, scary. everything's cool. Right. Yeah. Is there a haunted location that you refuse to go visit? Oh, no. I'd go to any of them. On your website, I mean, you have a list of places that you've been. Yeah. Matt and I try to, like, when we go on vacations and stuff, we either work them around places that I've wanted to visit or... Like I'll look and find the, you know, haunted places wherever it is we're going, and or cemeteries because I like really cool cemeteries. So, what, have there has there been a place that you actually went to and it was even more exciting than you hoped it would be? Yeah, Goldfield Hotel. Tell us about that. that. What, what is that? Um, it's in Nevada, and it's a, a a ghost town pretty much. I mean, there's like a handful of people that still live there, but it was a boom town during the mining days. And it's kind of where um, the guys off Ghost Adventures got their start when he did like that documentary before they got their show. And so it's kind of on every paranormal enthusiast list of places to go. And it's not open um, to people. You kind of have to know people. But I was lucky enough to know people. And so we got in and, you know, everyone's like, oh, it's so haunted. It's so haunted. But there's so many places where you hear all these, you know, brag brags about how active the place is and you get there nothing happens and so Mm -hmm. I kind of did I didn't really have any expectations um but we were in the basement of this humongous hotel that's like mid remodel so it's not finished you know there's no electricity and things like that we're in the basement and we were getting ready to go back upstairs to get our stuff and check out like the upper floors of the hotel And so we're going up these stairs and we're like halfway between floors and we hear what sounds like people like having a party almost like laughing and talking and moving around. And so we thought that people had broken into the hotel because it's like when we were there, people were stopping just to take their picture in front of it because it's like a well-known place. And uh, myself and the other lady that was there, we looked at each other. We're like, oh, my God, our purses are right in the lobby. (laughs) So we're literally thinking like people have broken in. They're going to steal our, you know, bags and whatever. And so we go running up the stairs. And as soon as we hit the top step, all the noise stopped. And we still thought that someone must have broken in. And so we searched the the building. And I mean, the door was still locked. And we like walked around the outside to see if they had ripped off any of the wood that was covering the windows. And it was all still there. So did it freak you out or was it exciting? No, it was exciting. <laughs> that sounds so fun. So if people listening say they want to kind of start getting into uh, ghost hunting, Right. What what advice would you give them? Like maybe they live in another state. Even um, don't believe the crap that you see on TV because TV's TV and like what crap? You know, like, you know, like the ghost hunting shows where everything's a demon. Yeah, I mean, you know, take it <laughs> yeah. for what it is. It's entertainment. So I think a lot of people have these ideas that they're going to get into it and it's going to be like on TV where there's always stuff happening and it's like super intense. Have you taken somebody with you and they 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 were expecting that? No, I never really took a whole lot of people with me, but I know when I ran the team and we'd have new people start, you could kind of tell that they were like really amped up thinking it was going to be, you know, this (laughs) super exciting event. And in reality, you're sitting in the dark somewhere for four hours, really not doing anything because, yeah, you know, most of what people get, it's on a voice recorder that you don't know until after it's over. When you listen back to it, you hear it. Right. 
yeah, they need to go to YouTube and look up some actual like right recordings and and see how boring it actually. Do you ever be. go on a ghost hunt and you're like, gosh, I could have been sleeping <laughs> for the past four hours? <laughs> well, you mentioned going out for four hours. I was like, good grief, like especially on like a like a work night, like okay. a school night or something. I right? have a weird question. You know how they always do the recordings in the dark with so is that like a ghost thing to ghosts hide if you have the lights on? No. Or is that just for <laughs> is that just for spook factor? It, well, there's like recording? I mean one reason is so there's a couple of theories like I always tell people if a place is haunted it's going to be haunted all of the time. It's not only right. going to be haunted in the middle of the night. Yeah. So I mean it's bogus to say, you know, you can only do a ghost hunt at night. The reason that most of them are done at night is because most people are sleeping, so you're not going to have a lot of interference. There's not going to be as much traffic. That makes sense. Um, See, I've never heard this. This is great. Yeah. And the other reason is <laughs> we that- have jobs. You right, know. jobs. Um, but shadow figures are fairly common, and it's easier to see them when it's dark because uh, I don't know how to describe a shadow figure. It's one of those things where it's like darker than dark. Like it's not- you know, it's not your normal shadow. Darker. It's not an absence of color. It's like it's like absorbing yeah, the it's color like, around it or something. Just like yeah. when like a black hole. I mean, it sounds silly, but like during ghost hunts and stuff, you can be at a location and for a while, like it's the ambiance or whatever the atmosphere is like normal, and then it gets too quiet. And that's hard yeah. to explain to someone that's never experienced it. But there is such a thing where it's just like it's eerily quiet. Like it can be painful when it's too quiet. Like <laughs> it it makes your head hurt. Yeah. Absolutely. I that's I know what you mean. I got you. <laughs> so shifting gears a little bit here, we always like to find out about people we bring on the podcast. Obviously, if you've listened to the podcast, what are some of your other hobbies and interests when you're not out hunting ghosts and looking for creepy things? Do you have other things that you do or does that pretty much keep you busy? The blog and writing takes up what little free time I have. Matt and I have started doing what we call morbid miniatures and they're like little cemetery scenes in a jar. And they're tiny. Cute. They're like ships in a bottle. Yeah. Oh, is, this, is this a thing? I mean, this sounds awesome. Or did it's a you thing kind now. Of, did you like kind of invent it? No, I have seen like a couple um, like little terrarium cemeteries are kind of popular, but I could not keep the moss alive <laughs> long enough. So I thought, you know, let's try like with not real moss. And so we just started messing around. We saw a video on YouTube where a guy had done something similar. And so we just kind of tweaked what he was doing and um i love it turned it into our own thing so oh that's so do you fun. have pictures anywhere that yeah there's can actually see? a website that is kind of half created right now but it's morbidminiatures.com is this your website yeah morbidminiatures.com i'll put that at iamsaltlake.com with this episode's uh show note links and whatnot very cool very cool here's a question if you could do a skype call with any living person who would it be like not paranormal related or just in like anybody? It could be anybody. I mean, this is, we're just, we're just trying to get to know Jennifer a little bit oh here now. Gosh. You know, we got to talk about some, some hauntings and ghosts. So or... I like dead people better than I like living people. Well, okay. Who would you, who would you have a Skype call with dead? Oh, Jim Morrison. <laughs> Jim, oh, wouldn't oh, that be good great? good call. Yeah. Jim Morrison. I, I've, uh, I don't know if we've Maybe you that. can do a Skype call with him. You never know. <laughs> Ouija Skype. Ouija Skype. Have you, have you ever done a Ouija board? I have a confession to make. I have not, but okay. I own one. Are you scared to do it? Because I've always wanted wait, to. Wait, and I'm you're so, scared to do I'm a Ouija so board? I'm so scared, but I want to do it so bad. I want to play Ouija. Let's do one tonight. I'm scared it will work. That's what I'm scared of. Can we pot? Is it something you could podcast? You would have, we'd have to YouTube it, don't you think? Yeah, you got to see. Well, What do you mean YouTube you can, it? Well, yeah, I mean like like record it, put it oh, on you so you oh, can see I what gotcha, happens. I gotcha, I gotcha. With a Ouija? I'll come back sometime and I'll bring the Ouija board. Well, okay. you, know, you know what? I thought it would be really fun to bring you back through like uh, closer to even Halloween again. And we could oh, like yeah. do something a little we bit different. We could do a Ouija yes. board episode. Yeah. You I could will, do a Ouija board podcast where you get like interviews from interviews the from the dead. <laughs> I'm loving it. I love it. Uh, if you could do anything on your next birthday, what would you like to do? I would like a really nice vacation. Anywhere particular? Or are you uh, talking like a, like not even a ghost hunting vacation? Oh, yeah. No, not a ghost hunting vacation. On the I, beach in Hawaii. Yeah. I want to go like either someplace tropical or I want to go to like London. Ooh, that would be cool. Very cool. Very yeah. cool. If you could learn one random skill, what would you like to learn? I'd like to learn how to like do actual coding on a computer, like where I could write my own software. 
Chrissy could teach you that, right? No? Yeah. I mean, I'm in the process of learning myself. <laughs> what about <laughs> always learn. the most memorable concert or sporting event that you've been to? Oh, the most memorable concert was probably OzFest in like 96. Really? Was here in, where was No, it was in Phoenix. It, yeah, I was going to say, I don't think, did OzFest come to Salt Lake City? I don't even know what, is OzFest It's like Ozzy a, like a, like a Lollapalooza yeah, type Ozzy thing. Ozzy. Right on. Right, wasn't it? Like yeah. a bunch of bands, mm-hmm. just, just a big festival. I dig it. It was fun. He puts on a great, I mean, it was years ago. He, he's he a good a entertainer. Concert. Yeah. What would you name the autobiography of your life? Plot twist. Plot Ooh. twist. I like that. What do you want on your tombstone? Oh, that's a tough one too. I'd, you know, I'd have to really think about that because it would have to be something like super pithy and like, you know, snarky and and short and to the point. (laughs) Or it could be like, call me on your Ouija board and then it could be a code. (laughs) When anyone does that code, you can come and talk to them. (laughs) Now that's what I want. I'm stealing it. Read read my books. (laughs) Rarely we bring people on through Ogden. We've had a few people on. So instead of Salt Lake City, let's talk Ogden for let's a minute. Let's talk Ogden. If There's somebody, a lot of cool if stuff somebody's there. visiting Ogden, like say I was to go up there for the afternoon, is there anything you would tell me to check out or do? Yeah, you'd have to check out 25th Street. Just kind of walk around that area. There's, it's I've amazing. heard there's cool shops up there. There's really cool shops. Um, there's amazing restaurants and bars, and the Union Station is just a really cool looking building that you can go in, and they have a museum in there. Is that the building that got burnt down? Yes. Okay. Yeah, I, I was reading too much today about that. Yeah. That's also haunted. Yeah, it's haunted. The guy got conked on the head with a piece of the, the building. What? <laughs> Back up a little bit. I know we were talking about Ogden, but is there like a good resource? Well, I mean, I guess your website, but where can I find out about all these like Ogden and Salt Lake ghosts? Yeah, that's and stuff where's like a good that? location because your, your website's the only place I've ever really found multiple information pieces. Yeah. I'm, you know, honestly, I'm trying, like, that's my goal kind of is to, um, yeah, kind put, of create a hub. Yeah. Create a hub and put more reliable information out there instead of like my cousin's brother's friend's sister told me that <laughs> this, this is place... Reddit people. <laughs> right. So, um, you know, if you Google like whatever the city is and then haunted, you'll, you'll find, you'll find a couple some of stuff, stories, but it's probably more of a search and grab. Yeah. Back to Ogden, what about favorite local eating spots up there? I mean, you mentioned, I think you might have mentioned a couple or there were some bars and stuff. Yeah, so our favorite bar is the Yes Hell. I haven't even heard of that one. Oh, it's great. And it has a creepy theme and their food is amazing. And And the people are super cool. Right in Ogden there? Mm Mm-hmm. It's right off 25th Street. Man, Chrissy, we got to go up there and spend a day or something. I know. Someone even told me today there's a great soul food place in Ogden that probably makes great chicken and waffles. I don't know what it is. But Probably I was like, I need to go to Ogden. Pig in a jelly jar or something. Don't they got a pig in a jelly jar yeah, up there now? They yeah, they do. Hmm. Is there anything you would change about Ogden if you could? The only thing, there's nothing that I would necessarily change right now. I just worry that um, as it gets more popular and like, I think it's an amazing thing that people are going in and fixing up these locations that have been neglected for so long. But I'm really afraid that Ogden's going to lose like its little rough It's going to be cool, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. I mean, because it's still cheap to buy a house up there. There's not a ton mm-hmm. of people up there, but once Salt Lake City gets oversaturated, that's what everyone's someone today at work to said. When Salt Lake becomes L.A., Ogden's be gonna be gonna become Salt Lake. Like, I could see that. Just, I could see that. I mean, and they, yeah. they, you know, with their their little Twilight series that they've done up there with yeah. the, with all the bands coming up there, and, and there's so much uh, cool stuff going there's on. There's a up lot there. of stuff going up there in Ogden, but. Mm-hmm. Um, Anything else? Uh, so the book, let's run down the list here as we kind of wrap this up. Unless there was anything else that you wanted to make sure we talked about while we had you. I mean, I've had a blast having you on the podcast. And and I could just keep asking you well, questions about haunted places. Is there? I mean, you got her, Chrissy. You wanna, is there oh, anything you want to ask her? Real I mean, quick? do you have a favorite haunted place that you visited in Utah? I have a couple. Uh, my most favorite is probably the Union Station. Really? Oh, we got to go there. Okay. Absolutely have to go there. That's so on my checklist now. You should like... Get a room at the Bigelow because they've <gasps> yes! fixed it up and it's, and it's really gorgeous. nice inside. It's amazing. They've done yeah. like so wait, that's great. like a hotel. Yeah, okay. so it's the, this beautiful. The Bigelow is one of Utah's three grand hotels, and it's the only <laughs> one that's how much still operating as a hotel. And there were like murders there and suicides. Oh yeah, and, it's you know, got crazy the whole deal. Yeah, but you could stay there and enjoy all the food in the bars on Twenty Fifth and check out Union Station and staycation. I staycation know, I, time. I, I like it. Um, yeah. Yeah, I have one more question. Give us a piece of life advice for our listeners. I think my biggest piece of advice, and it's directly correlated to what I've done with the Dead History, is if there's something that you're passionate about, just do it. Doesn't matter if you don't know what you're doing or 
you don't know how to do it. You'll figure it out, you know, as you go along and you never know what'll happen and where you'll end up with it. What's the best way for listeners to get a hold of you, Jennifer? Um, the best way is thedeadhistory.com. I'm also on Facebook, The Dead History page, Instagram, The Dead History, Twitter, The Dead History. It's pretty easy. Very cool. Awesome. I've had a great conversation. Thank you so much for coming and doing the podcast. And I was serious. Let's maybe try to do something a little bit closer to Halloween. That would be so much fun. Um, and, you know, something a little different even for the podcast. Oh, and, yeah. And we- oh, you could do it at the Bigelow. <gasps> we could oh, do that. Oh, my gosh. I like, I like your style. Yes. Very cool. Well, thank you so much, Jennifer. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Many thanks again to Jennifer Jones for joining us on this episode of the podcast and sharing her story. Head on over to our website at IamSaltLake.com slash 344 for all the links for you to get in touch with her. Go reach out to Jennifer and let her know that you heard her on this podcast. All right, guys, don't forget to visit our website, IamSaltLake.com. This is where you can dig through the entire back catalog of episodes. Consider sharing one or two of your favorite episodes on social media with your family and friends. We also have an event calendar right there on the website so you can check it out and stay up to date on all the cool things going on here in Salt Lake City. And many thanks again to our sponsors for this episode, Five Wives Vodka and Blip Billboards. If you would like to become a sponsor, get in touch with us. Just email us at hello at IamSaltLake.com. I promise we don't bite. All right, guys, you have a great week. Get out and enjoy the city, support local, and we'll see you on the next episode. And good night, Grammy.